Hey guys, what's up? Today's Friday, June 4th. I'm at this little auction in Pennsylvania. Not really um, a lot of things going on here. But today I'm gonna show you guys what I did with my wiring on my trailer, how I wired it up. I think I, ca I came up with the ultimate way to wire a trailer up. And somebody called me out on one of the comments saying I wasn't wearing a vest last time. I do own vests. As you can see, this one's a little dirty already, but that was a good comment. So, you know, I'm gonna be wearing this. Uh, hopefully I'll remember to wear it every time because safety is obviously very important. But let me show you guys here what's going on. So I have a seven way on the front of my trailer, right here. And let me tell you guys, I had a lot of problems when I would be jackknifing where, you know, this would get stuck. Uh, somewhere on the truck it would get stuck somewhere on the trailer and I would rip these wires all the time over the years it's happened multiple times so what I did was usually the wire comes out of here and you have your or mail right what I did was I actually made both sides a female this is typically not how it is on a hotshot trailer but that's how I did on this trailer. So both both of these are males, as you guys can see. So if this plug, the reason why I did that is if this thing gets stuck, if this wire gets stuck somewhere, something happens to this wire, it's gonna rip the wire and now just put a new wire in there. Before, you know, it would cut the seven way, it would cut the seven way going into the trailer because it would be a, uh, it would be a male plug, you know, coming out of here so that will get cut and now you're having to resolder and rewire the trailer the wire going into your trailer so that's number one how I did it and I like having the one that has the lights because it will tell you if you're having a problem right away on this part of the trailer bam so moving on um, all of my lights are single lines going straight into the junction box so like this wire leaves here goes straight to the junction box so the reason why i do that is let's say i run something over you know this light gets damaged the wire gets damaged whatever happens here i only lose that one light all my other running lights are going to stay on a lot of times what happens is you know you you run over a tire whatever happens and that wire gets cut you lose all your lights you lose a whole side of your trailer um and i don't want to do that because if i lose one light i can keep going right guys it's nighttime whatever's happening um you can throw your flashers on whatever right but you can keep moving but you see a lot of guys at night where something happened they're getting a short whatever's going on they lose all their lights i don't want to deal with that it has happened to me before um now i'm gonna explain where the wire comes when the wire leaves the light it goes into a junction box but this is a fuse junction box and i have one here one there and one in the back the reason why i did that is the wire goes from the plug that you guys saw in the front and it's one wire all the way here so there's no interruptions there's no cuts and that's important when you have no cuts in a wire less last chance of something going wrong so i'm never gonna have to deal with the wire leaving from there to here that's never gonna be a problem it's a enclosed seven-way wire comes all the way here now from here it goes into my light so it goes into this light in the front and then it goes into my breakaway and then another enclosed seven-way goes all the way to the middle so that way I can run these four lights here. So I got the turning light, which is also a running light. Then I have just a running light here. So I'm never gonna have a problem from that junction box to this junction box, because again, it's enclosed, nothing interrupting. And if, again, if this wire gets cut in the back here, it's only gonna affect this one light. Nothing else will go wrong in the trailer, just that one light right there bam 
from this junction um is it from this one no and then from that main junction box again it goes all the way to the back here for everything in the rear same thing again this light goes straight to the junction box the light in the back straight to the junction box if this wire gets cut i only lose this one light now i'm going to show you guys the junction box on the bottom which i already took the cover off it right here all right so this is the junction box and i'm not gonna go too crazy and show you guys but you guys can see that there is one seven way so look, there's one seven way right here and this comes up here so the top part if you guys look it's very clean there's only seven wires going to the top so nothing is in the way of these seven wires on the top part so this is a seven way to the front and on the bottom there's another seven way that goes to that junction box in the back and i'll show you guys in one second um and here is my breakaway and it's away from all the elements you know rain snow whatever um and i have the lights that are in the front like i told you guys all right so now i'm gonna sh go back here show you guys here so this is the other seven way that i was telling you i'm not gonna open it there's no point it's the same thing as that one so this is the second seven way oh sorry and as you guys can see the seven way is fused the the junction box is fused so you guys can see right there so it's a fused junction box and that is very very important because if something goes wrong as you guys know all of our trucks cars they all have fused boxes that protect the wiring trailers don't have that i don't understand why so i came up with this and to me it's the best way to do it so again let me show you guys here so the seven so the seven way comes in here and then the lights you know i have lights that go to the right side and have lights that go to the left side the right, right here and then i have another seven way like i was explaining before that is this one here and it goes from here it goes all the way to the back of the trailer so now i'm gonna show you guys that one this one here has a lot of wiring back here so it kind of looks a little messy. But I'm gonna crawl here, guys. But it's actually not, it's very organized. So you guys can see here, this is my other junction box back here. Um, and as you guys can see, there's a lot of wiring here, but everything's organized. I know where everything is. And I do like leaving extra wire as you guys can see, like the wire comes this way and goes back. But this is an extra wire. If I have to cut it, I'm not rewiring the whole trailer again. So this is extra wire right here. This loop. This is an extra wire. This is a loop here. Uh, all right. Let me get out of here again. So again, light straight to junction box. Um, and let me show you here. So here's the light, the wire. See, if you follow it, it does not connect directly to this. It goes directly to the junction box under here. So that's how I did it, guys. It took me about four days to run the whole trailer like this. It took four times, five times the amount of wiring because I'm not jumping from light to light. I'm going directly from light to the junction box. I am not an expert at wiring. I did somehow become a little bit of an expert by suffering a lot on the road. But if you guys have any questions, you know, you guys can leave a comment down there. I'll try to answer as much as I can. Like I said, to me, uh, it's kind of common sense the way the wiring works. You know, it just goes this wire to that wire, that wire to the next one. And so, um, 
I think wiring is kind of easy except for when you have like a ground issue right if your trailer's ground um, grounding somewhere then it sucks it's kind of hard to figure that out there's ways to eliminate and you know figure it out but yeah that's that's usually the hardest part but wiring from scratch is easy but yeah if you guys have any questions you guys can leave a comment below there and i'll try to help you guys out as much as i can i do waterproof i got that part i do waterproof all of my wiring and the way that i do that i don't know if you guys will be able to see it here let's see the way that i waterproof this wiring here is i actually use i think they're like these aviation uh, butt connectors or whatever they are um, but they have a little soldering thing in the middle so when you when you heat it up it actually solders both wires together and then they have this little blue seal on the end of each side which seals it when you heat it up that melts and it seals so that water doesn't get in but sometimes a little hole will get poked on that so then what i use is i also use one of those black uh, shrink, shrink wraps whatever they're called so i use that black one over the aviation one and that really does seal it and then i also use one of those roof rubber spray i'll, I'll put a picture on the screen here too um, but yeah that's how i do it and guys it may look like overkill but when you're on the road you don't want to have an issue you don't want to be doing wiring and it's sorry my battery died there so as i was saying um our wiring always goes haywire when it's snowing raining at night whenever we don't want to be working with wiring and i don't have any issues i've did this about three months ago or so and i haven't had a single issue since that happened and one thing that i forgot is you want to put this dielectric grease on the end on the plugs so on the back of the plugs right here you can see it's all it's all greasy so you put that dielectric grease in the plug so that way when water gets in there uh salt water from places that snow in the mountains up north it won't uh crusty you know that bluish like white crust from from um the salt water from when it snows so anyways you want to put that on your plugs you also want to put it on that that fem uh, that female plug right there so on both of them you want to put some of this it's very cheap there it is guys that's that's how i do it that's how i ran my whole trailer and i believe that that's the best way that you can wire up um, a trailer the safest way and one that keeps us away from the mechanic shops so oh by the way all the mechanics because i i try to hire someone to do this for me so i didn't have to do it um you know obviously I, I work hard guys when i get home i want to hang out with my family and not be wiring up my trailer so i did try to hire someone and nobody wanted to do it they told me it was a bad idea yeah a bad idea because it's gonna keep me away from the mechanic shop you know what i mean so you guys let me know was this a good idea or a bad idea but i already know my answer i think it's a great idea but that so that's my take on that one and what do you guys think about this load right here that's a fedex step van i'm about uh 13 2 right now so 13 2 this is a handicap van so it has one of those you can't really see it but it has like a wheelchair lift in there it has a wheelchair um you can kind of see right there it's called a mobility van all right guys uh like share subscribe you guys know the deal i appreciate you guys you know commenting commenting on the bottom there it does help the channel it helps youtube's algorithm or whatever they 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 do there so let's get this channel popping help me out there and i'll see you guys next time